I want you to imagine the scene in Jerusalem, that day that has now become known as Palm Sunday. The day that Jesus entered the city, knowing that he was entering the last week of his earthly life. Huge crowds of people of all ages were filling the streets of Jerusalem. There was no social distancing, quite the opposite in fact. Excitement was in the air because it was festival time. Jewish people from all around were coming into Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. The time when they remembered how God had miraculously rescued their great, 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 add a few more greats to that list, their great grandparents from Egypt many, many years before. Something else was adding to the excitement. There was a rumour. People were gossiping about Jesus. Maybe something like this. Hey, you know that Jesus, the teacher who speaks about God with real authority? Yes, that's the one, the one who raised Lazarus from the dead. Well, he's been spotted just about to enter the city. Or people might have been saying, do you think he's the one we've been waiting for? Might he be the rescuer God has promised in his word? Others yet may have said, he must be the one. So many have seen his miracles with their own eyes. Only God could do what he has done. If you're at home listening now with younger children, pause and ask them to share with you their favourite miracle. Let's turn to our Bibles now. Press pause to go and get yours if you need to. I'm going to read now from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 34. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. I've got a question for you younger ones. How did Jesus plan to enter Jerusalem? I don't mind if you shout loudly at the screen because I won't hear a thing. That's right, on a colt or a donkey. Actually, both answers would be correct because a colt is the name for a male donkey that's less than four years old. You know, I've been doing a bit of reading about donkeys and they are extremely interesting creatures. I'm going to put your donkey knowledge to the test right now. Now, any age can join in this, this short quiz. So are you ready? I'm going to give you four facts and I simply want to know, are they true or false? Fact number one, Spain has more donkeys than any other country in the world. Spain has more donkeys than any other country in the world. True or false? Actually, it's false. Ethiopia has the most donkeys, closely followed by China. Fact number two, because of their large ears, a donkey is capable of hearing another donkey 60 miles away in proper desert conditions. Is that true or false? Believe it or not, that amazing fact is true. What about this next one? Donkeys have an excellent memory they are capable of remembering a place that they've been to or another donkey that they met 25 years ago. True or false? Actually, true again. What about this final fact? A boy donkey is called a Jack and a girl donkey is called a Doris. True or false? Actually, half and half. A boy donkey is called a Jack, but a girl donkey is called a Jenny. 
So why all this time thinking about donkeys? Well, because Jesus choosing to ride a donkey to enter Jerusalem at this point tells us something extremely important about who he really is. Remember, we're thinking today about what kind of king Jesus is. Before and during King David's reign, the donkey was thought to be a royal animal and was ridden by kings. So Jesus is showing that he is a king and he is a king from the line of David. In Jesus' time though, a great king who was about to do something mighty would have been expected to ride a powerful horse. In choosing a donkey, Jesus was showing what kind of king he is. A humble king, a king bringing peace, a king who would take the punishment for everything his people do wrong, a king who would rule, not by force, but by changing hearts. And you know the really encouraging bit? There's something in this passage that tells you that Jesus is God's promised king. But you might only spot it if you look at the telling of the same story in John's Gospel and notice the tiny note at the bottom of the page that tells you that what Jesus did here is prophesied or promised in the Old Testament in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9. Let me read that verse now. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Wow, hundreds of years before this actually happened, the prophet Zechariah said that God's chosen king a king who was going to save people from their sin and make them right with God would enter Jerusalem on a donkey. So in this part of the Bible, we see that Jesus is a king, a humble king and God's promised king. Just a, a, a final question for some of you younger ones. Who can remember three things that happened yesterday? You might want to press pause now and have a conversation about that. Hopefully we can all remember what happened yesterday, although I'm sure you younger ones are a lot better at remembering than some of us older ones. But we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, do we? We might have hopes, we might make plans, but we don't actually know for sure what's going to happen tomorrow. Notice in this bit of the Bible, how everything happens just as Jesus said it would, because Jesus knew exactly what was about to happen, because he is God. What was about to happen held no surprise for Jesus. He was humble, yes, but entirely in control and still is. And this is good news for those of us who might be a bit worried about tomorrow or next week or the week after. King Jesus knows what is going to happen. He is in control. And we know that he loves us so much that he was willing to give up his life for us. Surely he is able to care for us in any situation. Perhaps if you're watching this in a family group, this is a good time to press pause and talk to God Talk to God together about anything that might be worrying you about the future. Remembering that God is in control, that he is good and that he has the power to help us.